I want you Vinci my kicks. All the mark, can't see when they tick. I'm at war, I'm icing the blitz. Kill them off, I feel like John Wick. Make me sick, so I need a hug. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to You're Not Gonna Like This. This is episode two, Social Justice. And I have to tell y'all that from here on out, we split the episodes into parts so that y'all can watch us more and we can hear y'all opinions more as well. We got special guests with us today, uh, Jay Halfaday of the Halfaday Show. Um, his ad name for his page and his ad name for Instagram will be coming up on the screen shortly and it'll be in the bio of the YouTube as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get get started. Um, so first things first, uh, when it comes to social justice, we got to look at obviously the recent things that have happened with James Blake in Canoka, Kano- Wisconsin. And my thoughts on that, that's just, it's really sad to really see that uh, with his back turned to the police officers and they have seven shots put in his back like that. That's, that's, that's something terrible. And I, I could, I only have words. I, know, I didn't even have words when I saw the video. And it's to the point where I feel like sometimes I get desensitized to it because it just happens so much and I see so many videos of it. And I, you should never, you should never get desensitized to something like that, of course, because it should never happen. And nonetheless, uh, we got we got to find the cops that killed Breonna Taylor. Still on our large, and we got to get the Louisville uh, District Attorney to capitalize and do his job as well. As well. Um, first thing first, um, PJ, what you what do you want to see happen first, and when it comes to things like this? Um. Oh uh, man, I don't I don't even know. It seemed like when we talk about stuff like this, it's almost as if, you know, we kind of like it, it's real repetitive and it's like stuff like this, it's when we want to see change, it's almost like we're not going to see it cuz you know the system is so messed up as it is. So honestly, one thing I would like to see is um so what I what I've learned is like police officers have these, you know, these unions that that establish these these kind of like bills of rights or whatever that police have. So a lot of the stuff that police do, they're able to find a way to get to find a way to get away with, you know, the things that they do. I know, um, what's it called? Um, they have qualified immunity, which is something that Jordan had talked about um, before. And, uh, you know, things like that shouldn't be these, it, it should, the cops should not be able to to do these things and in, in, in kind of like justified in a way with their, you know, bills of rights and in this, this sort of immunity. So one thing I would like to see is, you know, uh, things like that have to have to be reformed. They have to, you know, they have to go deeper into what the, what the police system is and, and, and things of that nature before we can even see any real change. So, you know, um, and another thing i like to see is, um, just an overall sense of, you know, more unity among the black community in general. I know we see, we see a lot of the, we see a lot of these shootings and a lot of these killings, you know, white people on black people. And we preach, you know, how, how things like this aren't right. And it's not right. But at the end of the day, we're still out here killing each other. And that's one thing that I don't like to see is black people killing other black people, you know, all the time, things like that. We need to be unified, especially at a time like this, where it seemed like the only thing we got is each other. You feel me? So I don't like to see these headlines of, of uh, you know, black people can other black people as well, because then it gives white people ammo, something to talk about. What about black on black crime? What about this? What what about that? It shouldn't be like that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, at the end of the day, we just gotta we gotta be the change that we want to see. You feel me? And uh, also, shout out to um, shout out to Masai Ujiri, you know, the Toronto Raptors. Um, I think was he either president or a GM. Um, you know, things like that. A lot of the a lot of the times we see, you know, situations like that where um people white people would, would i guess they feel they have some sense of authority they they treat they treat black people some sort of way and then they lie about it and then you know nothing is done about it and i, I you know a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of the times we we often you know feel as if you know um we're just like i said we're just hopeless in these sort of things and it's it's really sad to see so shout out to him and uh yeah that's that's all i got to say it's pretty much that my piece yeah, that's, that was that was pretty rough. Uh, that police officer kind of ruined one of the greatest moments of his life with him winning the championship with the Raptors. And yeah, that can't that just can't happen. What about you, Jordan? What do you, what do you want to see change? Man, I want to see a lot of stuff change. Uh, 
Hold up. Like PJ was saying, like, there's a lot of stuff that protects, like, police officers when they do stuff wrong. So I, what I would like to see mainly is accountability and justice. Like, if somebody is clearly doing their job improperly, they need to be held accountable to the full extent of the law. So, like, the thing with Jacob Blake or, like, Breonna Taylor, where they clearly was in the wrong by all means, like, they killing unarmed people. They killing people in general. That's not their job. They need to, like, be punished by the law. On top of that, police got, like, a huge budget, like, money-wise. Like, they got military-grade gear. I want all that stuff taken away. Like, we need to divert the resources to other things, like schools, public housing, like, all that. Much better ways to spend money than putting it into the police. Okay. Well, shout out to uh, Austin, Texas. I remember seeing a couple of months ago that Austin, Texas, one of the first uh, cities in America to actually cut the police budget. They cut it by a third, based on what I saw. Previously, the police budget was over four hundred million dollars, but they cut it by a third, and it's now a hundred and fifty, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around the area. And they said they were they were going to allocate it to public housing, education, and things that are important as well. Uh, lastly, for myself, things that I would like to see is we can all be in agreement that we all want to see the prosecution of officers that do commit crimes of that nature, of course. Another thing I like to see is better better training of the officers so they, they can't they can't they don't have to use force so soon because I looked it up and in other countries on the Western Hemisphere like Finland and Norway, uh, policing is actually like a degree. I remember when me and PJ talked about this uh, the other day, and like he wanted it as well, that he wanted policing to become an actual degree. And in Finland and Norway, you have to go between two to three years before you can actually get your badge and your gun and all those things to actually be a full-fledged police officer. While here in America, it's only 10, 36 weeks, which is between two, two and a half months to eight. And that's, that's, not, that's not a lot of time. That's a very, very, very short. And within four months of your police training here in America, you already have your badge and your gun, and you're basically on the scene as well. And a comparison for that would be back when George Floyd. So when George Floyd got killed, uh, the two people, the two people that were on the scene beside Derek Chavin himself, um, were two rookie officers that were within their first year of being police officers. So, and obviously, when you look at that video, you can see that them two alone did not know exactly what to do in that situation. And you can obviously tell because they're rookie officers and stuff like that. You can't have you can't have that because when things get extreme to that nature, you need the veteran police that know actually what they're doing. So things like that cannot happen. Facts. Um, anything anybody have anything else to add between things they want to see change or like? Man, I want to point out that because a lot of times you see like on like Twitter or like when people conversating on like the news, like the right wing uh, media outlets, you'll see their first defense is, well, obviously that person was doing something wrong. I want to point out that even if you're doing something wrong, that don't make it a justification for you to lose your life or like for them to even shoot you or pull a weapon on you. Like for police officers, they're supposed to exhaust all of their methods before they get to lethal force. Like there's so many other ways they could have de-escalated mm-hmm. that situation before they start firing their gun. Hey, uh, one thing I want to say is too, um, that kind of goes along with that. Um, so, uh, people, people are really quick to try to justify, you know, um, you know, the, the, the shootings and the killings and things of that nature. And, uh, I think that that's just a, that's just a reflection of how, you know, how the system is really, I think, and how, how, how the, the layout of America is, you know, it shouldn't be, you know, um, things like this shouldn't be an issue of like parties. You feel me? It shouldn't, it shouldn't be, get political. I see a lot of, you know, Republicans mainly try to justify that, but they can't, but they, they, they applaud a young man who kills two people during a protest and gets to go home and, and go to sleep. And I seen one lady say, uh, I want Kyle Rittenhouse as my president, things that, things like that. So I just think, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough, you know, of course, being being black in America, because you you see people like this, and that really just reflects um, what they believe in and things of that nature. And I, I just think that, in general, 
you know, Black Lives Matter and, and things of that nature should not be related to the Democratic Party. It should not be related to politics. It should be, it should be simple human decency that people, people should want to see people live. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be, Black Lives Matter should not be ammunition for the Republicans to use against Democrats. And they should not be labeling us as, as terrorists. They should not be labeling, labeling us as anti-law. It shouldn't be things of that nature. We just want to live, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, if we want to see some real change, things like that, you know, have to be addressed. We have to address how, 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 how bad this system is. I feel like, you know, a lot of the time we really, a lot of, a lot of people who are uneducated don't realize how deep into the American system this is like uh, policing originated from slave, slave, um, slave overseers trying to catch, you know, slaves on the run. It's slave patrol. That's basically what it is. It still is that. And I think as time progresses, things like that just fit, things like that get better, but they, it eventually gets to the point where something has got to fit. You know, we live better than we, than our ancestors live. We, li- we live better than people in the civil rights movement live, but there's always going to be a problem with the system. So if, if we want real change, we got to figure out ways to infiltrate that system and try to make it better for, you know, black people in general. Sounds, sounds, sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. I also got to say, um, shout out to the Wisconsin um, DA and Attorney General, uh, or not Attorney General, Governor. They, on the other day, I did see that Kyle Wittenhouse was arrested on three federal counts for his, for his actions uh, against those protesters the other the other night. Um, that's all we have for part A. Uh, part B is going to be in the bio as well. And we're going to continue this conversation with social justice. I'd like to thank y'all for joining us here on You're Not Going to Like This. And this is our signing off, followed by PJ and Jordan. And join us for the next part. <laughs>